This is a diamond. I just love finding new places to wear. Diamond. Yes. It's overwhelming. Will you marry me? Yes. The world's most brilliant gem. Exquisite. Beautiful. Pure. Precious. Rare. Total lie. Not rare at all. Diamonds are abundant. Diamonds are cheap. And they are definitely forever. Not forever. They're excavating 2.5 billion year old rocks. They're carbon, and you can grow them in a lab for like 30% of the cost of real diamonds. Call her chandelier. White diamonds. Diamonds, diamonds. So, how did we get here? And who's to blame for this diamond debacle? That was pretty dramatic. Diamonds are rare, and they're not. Oh, we don't buy it. You think that women care about it? Like, whether they get a real trying to see how much it's worth? Zero. I'm going to get us the answers we need, but first, we need to understand what a diamond even is. Okay, diamond, this thing. It's just made of carbon, with each little carbon atom bonded together isometrically, which basically means it's the same in all directions, and it's very similar to the lead in your pencil. That's graphite, just a slightly different structure of carbon. That's it, and carbon is all around us. Now, I guess what makes them a bit harder to come by is the fact that they form deep in the Earth's crust under immense temperature and pressures. Then they have to transport to Earth's surface in magma chambers and cool very slowly to grow into the big crystals we all love. Okay, great, clear. So how do we go from carbon being everywhere to diamonds being rare wedding jewels? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Yeah! So, 800 BC India, the Dravidian people start finding these rough diamonds in riverbeds. What is this? So they harvest them, and because they're actually scarce, precious gems, they start using them in trade for silk and spices. But at the time, these are like dull, blackish hunks of carbon. They're, they're basically rocks. But fast forward to 1869, South Africa. See, they're really good at exporting wool and sugar. And I don't know about you, but wool and sugar aren't particularly interesting. So naturally, the Europeans wanted nothing to do with South Africa until 1886, when this South African farmer finds a 22-carat diamond in a local riverbed. Well, I guess that they're gonna start some trouble for us, huh? Uh, yeah. Because in walks Cecil Rhodes. I reckon this mine is all mine now. <laughs> So he buys this massive diamond mine in South Africa, the De Beers mine. But Rhodes has a problem. See, because all these farmers started finding rare diamonds in South Africa, the price of diamonds was falling off a cliff. They were everywhere. They weren't rare at all. So tons of these mines start closing and Rhodes is like, Oh my gosh, I need to control supply and demand of diamonds or I'm doomed. Pause. You hear this all the time. These markets are undersupplied. Supply chain begins in America. Demand this, supply that. Demand is skyrocketing, yada, yada, yada. But what does that actually mean? What's the mechanism here? Mechanism, what's the mechanism? I present a brief interlude on economics. Okay. This is the infamous supply and demand curve. Price goes up along the y-axis and quantity of things like diamonds goes up along the x-axis. For the most part, our world operates in perfect competition. That means our markets set prices because everybody has the same information. So if your bougie neighborhood shop is price gouging for ground meat, well, you can just go to Walmart and pay the market rate. It is this principle that gives us an equilibrium for supply and demand that always settles at the perfect price. Supply and demand are in equilibrium. Everybody's happy. 
But if the supply of a good decreases, look what happens to prices. It shoots way up here because somebody is willing to pay that high price for the limited goods available. Yeah, I'll give you nine for it. Sweet. Are you with me? <laughs> because what's about to happen in our diamond story is exactly this monopolistic mechanism. Cecil Rhodes needs to limit supply and maximize demand. Because if he can do this, prices shoot up and his profits are maximized. Excellent, okay, so our dude Rhodes is worried. All these South African mines are obliterating the price of diamonds by flooding the market with these not so rare gems. So what does he do? Well, he does, he does what, what any good, good monopolist, monopolist would, would do. do. He keeps pretending diamonds are scarce. So funded by the Rothschild family, Rhodes goes and buys up all the failing South African mines and consolidates them into a cartel, De Beers Consolidated Mines Limited. And they go on a tour around the world, opening up satellite offices of De Beers with pseudonyms so people didn't know it was a monopoly. It's Diamond Development Corporation in Africa, CSO, Central Selling Organization, in Europe, Diamond Trading Company in England, the Syndicate in Israel. But of course, De Beers still got a problem. See, it's the Great Depression in the US, and they're having trouble convincing poor Americans that they should spend their hard-earned limited money on a not-so-precious piece of carbon. Enter N.W. Ayer, this famous ad agency in the US. They're like, demand for these diamonds isn't high enough. So they start giving them to big celebrities. You get a diamond. You get a diamond. And you get a diamond. Look, chump, you better wear this thing like your status depends on it. Even still, this isn't enough to influence poor Americans. So they pull out the nuclear option. Listen here, shrimps. We need something new. Something bold. Some, something to get these poor Americans to buy our diamonds like it's nobody's monopolistic business. Uh, I um, sir, how how about um a new slogan like "Diamonds are forever"? <laughs> Diamonds are forever. <laughs> Diamonds is forever. Yeah, riff on that, young girl. Uh, how about quote? How else could two months' salary last forever? You're telling me someone's gonna spend two months' salary on this piece of carbon? <laughs> So now you've got these ads rolling out everywhere. Salary lasts forever. A diamond is forever. To be Sean Connery as James Bond, 007 in Ian Fleming's Diamonds Are Forever. And all the while, all the while, this entire diamond industry is run by one company, De Beers, or whatever all their fake names were in different countries. Let me just fix this. <laughs> The good news? Is there good news? Yes, the good news. People found out about this De Beers Shell Corporation in the 2000s. They've been broken up and now they're like 35% of the world's rough diamond supply. We are much closer to that idea of perfect competition and De Beers doesn't get to control the price of diamonds anymore. But these ideas, this old advertising is so deeply ingrained in our culture, it doesn't really matter. So when you get down on one knee, presenting two months salary in a carbon rock that's pretty abundant and not very precious, that has been the basis of many a civil war and human rights violations, just remember, diamonds were never forever.